Hi guys, so the Chancellor of the Exchequer, Rishi Sunak, has released his budget. But while it was delivered with some fanfare and even had some of it discussed in the media before Parliament got to see it, which, of course, was met with ire from the Speaker of the House, who frankly should save some of that anger for the lying toe rags, like you know who, the budget contains some hard-to-swallow fine print. The Tory budget is designed, like everything else the Tories have delivered, to help the rich at the expense of the poor. But it contains enough big numbers and slogans so that the working class voters who backed Boris Johnson in 2019 will be confused. First we have the council tax rises. Now the Treasury believes that they will rise by 3% over three years. Well that doesn't sound so bad. However this week Michael Gove, the Minister for Leveling Up Housing and Communities, has the ability to go beyond that. The Office for Budget Responsibility thinks it could hit 6% not over three years, but 6% per year. Councils are in a deep financial hole at the moment, and some are close to bankruptcy. The grants that Rishi Sunak talked about on Wednesday are unlikely to do much to dent the money problems these councils face. Banks, however, are the real winners here. Surprise, surprise. They have been effectively handed a £1 billion a year tax cut. A tax or levy on bank profits will be cut from 8% to just 3%. Is it really the time for banks to benefit here? Remember, national insurance is going up. Now, Rishi Sunak defended this by saying that corporation tax is rising from 27% this year to 28% in 2023. However, banks will be protected because banks will see their threshold where they have to pay tax move from £25 million to £100 million. This, of course, means, yes, they will pay more in corporation tax, but only when they breach the new threshold. This is going to save them over a billion pounds a year. But you're probably thinking, Max, won't the banks pass on those savings to the consumer? Anyway, what is very worrying is how household disposable income is expected to drop over the next number of years because of this budget. The Institute for Fiscal Studies chief Paul Johnson told the media that there would be more years of real income barely growing, high inflation, rising taxes, poor growth keeping living standards virtually stagnant for another half a decade. He went on to say, A median earner will find their pre-tax pay just about outpaces inflation, but after the extra income tax and national insurance contributions due, their take-home pay will fall by about 1%, or £180 per year, in real terms. There was some good news for heavy goods vehicle operators, as they will see excise duty on their vehicles frozen, However, there's no word on vans and cars. On a side note, the Institute for Fiscal Studies says that the government is spending 44% of the budget on the NHS. This is unprecedented for any British government in modern history, even more so for a Tory one. So why is the government spending so much on the NHS? Is it to deal with the underfunding that has taken place over the last decade, or is it due to the current crisis? What is interesting is that public money for the NHS is going to private companies, some owned by people who are either Tory donors or current MPs or ex-MPs. A number of high-profile businesses have won contracts representing billions of pounds over the last number of years, sometimes with hastily concluded tendering procedures or no procedure whatsoever. The budget will be spun by the pro-Tory media as a benefit for ordinary people, the Chancellor and his colleagues will continue to rattle off huge sums of money spent, but will generally avoid mentioning how much this means in real terms per person. The Tories have let their friends off the hook in order to punish the poorest in society. Just like Brexit, it will be presented as a win for the ordinary man and woman. Let me know in the comment section, guys, what you think. As always, your comments are greatly appreciated. Thanks a lot.